Welcome. Preference processing in SAP Global Trade Services supports exporters in fulfilling all legal requirements for customs preferences and identify their goods as eligible for preferential treatment. In this demo, we will use the United States-Mexico-Canada agreement as an example. However, the process in GTS supports a wide range of free trade agreements, not limited to USMCA only. The views, information or opinions expressed are solely those of the individuals involved and not those of the individual's employer or any other group or individual. Let us look at some of the benefits provided by preference processing in SAP GTS. It enables you to manage long-term vendor declarations and LTVDs for customers' purposes. It lets you calculate preference based on preference agreements and preference models for standardized static or configurable products. Finally, you can make a statement on the preference eligibility of a product based on preference determination. Let us clarify some terminology. Preferential origin is applied to goods from particular countries, which fulfill certain criteria. The goods must meet conditions laid down in the agreement between countries or customs unions. Often goods must either be manufactured from raw materials or components that have been grown or produced in the beneficiary country or, should that not be the case, undergo a certain amount of working or processing in the beneficiary country. The agreement between the United States of America, the United Mexican States, and Canada, commonly known by its American English title United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement USMCA, is a free trade agreement concluded between Canada, Mexico, and the United States as a successor to the North American Free Trade Agreement. Preference processing in GTS consists of seven different steps. First, the creation of purchase orders typically triggers the need for long-term vendor declarations. These purchase orders and the subsequent goods receipts generate a work list. The work list serves as the basis for managing the long-term vendor declarations. We need to ask our vendors for them since they are needed to document the product's preference eligibility. We can send an email to our supplier and request vendor declarations. Each email contains a link to a web application that the vendor can use to maintain its data for submission back to the system. Then we need to aggregate all the vendor declarations for each product. If different vendor declarations exist for a product, the system generates an unambiguous statement for the product during aggregation. To do so, it always applies the worst-case principle. For example, if we procure a material from three vendors and receive positive LTVDs from two of the three vendors, the associated material's aggregated preference status would still not qualify according to the worst-case principle. During preference determination, GTS determines whether or not products are authorized or eligible for preferential customs duty. Preference determination is based on preference rules that may differ between trade preference agreement. For each sales document, the actual eligibility for preferential treatment is considered and determined since eligibility often depends on the actual sales price compared against the defined threshold value determined in the previous step. When preference eligibility has been determined, we can issue vendor declarations for our customers. By showing our customers that our goods are eligible for preferential treatment, we can stay one step ahead of the competition. We can also revoke a long-term vendor declaration that has already been issued to customers if there are changes to the prerequisites for preference eligibility for a product in the vendor declaration. We can also keep track of its issued vendor declarations for customers' purposes and start repeat prints from the monitoring function. Time to run our demo. We will kick off by creating a purchase order for some components of our finished product. From our supplier in Mexico, Lopez Sociedad Anonima, we order four components that go into our finished product, a forklift. You can display an overview of the work list by vendor or product for each administrative unit. You use this work list to request vendor-based long-term vendor declarations in the system. We create a vendor request for the selected products and look at a preview before saving and sending the requests. The log shows us that the request to Lopez has been sent through an email. The responses to our requests could be valid certificates of origin or do not qualify letters. We must populate the system with the data contained within these documents so that the data can be used downstream in the preference processing and customer long-term vendor declaration processes. In this example, we will let the supplier maintain this through a self-service portal. We will now switch hats and log in as the supplier. Through the email we just sent, Lopez can access our self-service portal. Through the link in the document, they get access to a work list. Trough a stepwise, guided procedure, they open it, and for the requested products, they confirm US origin for all components. They generate their response document and directly maintain the preference information in our system.
Before we can aggregate the result of the vendor declarations, the incoming responses must be accepted and transferred to the system. We will do that utilizing the Transfer Vendor Declaration app. We purchase products from several different suppliers to produce our forklift trucks. The different vendors can have different preference statuses in their long-term vendor declarations. As a result, the system has to aggregate the statements for individual products through aggregation. This process aggregates the various statements for a product according to the worst-case principle. For example, if we procure a material from three vendors and receive positive LTVDs from two of the three vendors, the associated material's aggregated preference status would not qualify according to the worst-case principle. Luckily, they all come out green and eligible for preferential origin. During preference determination, we determine whether or not products are authorized or eligible for preferential customs duty. Preference determination is based on preference rules that we can define in the implementation guide or purchase from a third-party data provider. Preference rules are referred to in U.S. MCA as the rules of origin and can be found in General Note 12 of the U.S. Harmonized Tariff Code. Based on a sales document, such as a billing document, from the ERP system, the system determines the preference eligibility of a given product. The result of preference determination is displayed. In the product section, you see the determination date for product GTSN2, as well as the corresponding bill of material and plant. We will now create a sales order for the finished product the forklift, for our Texas customer. We will create the subsequent delivery document and then create a pro forma billing document. The pro forma billing document will be the foundation for creating our own vendor declaration for customer's purpose. When a billing document has been created, we can use the Display CLVTD app to see a work list of vendor declarations for customer's purpose that needs to be completed. We are now at our final stage of the 7 steps process. We are ready to issue and print our own vendor declarations for customer's purpose. We do so by utilizing the issue LTVD for the customer's purpose app. We generate the certificates and see that they comply with the legal requirements set forth by the authorities. Mission accomplished. The functionality shown in this video is available in SAP Global Trade Services. The solution works connected to an SAP ERP, such as S4 HANA or SAP ECC. Let us recap some of the benefits provided by preference processing in SAP GTS. It enables you to manage long-term vendor declarations and LTVDs for customers' purposes. It lets you calculate preference based on preference agreements and preference models for standardized static or configurable products. Finally, you can make a statement on the preference eligibility of a product based on preference determination. Thanks a lot for watching. Please comment, like and subscribe. More videos like this coming shortly. See you then.